Hello YouTube, I'm John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. First, I'd like to apologize for the lateness of this episode. As you might be able to hear, I've been a bit sick lately. That's my excuse. Superwoman number one. Written and drawn by Phil Jiminis. How do I talk about this without spoilers? I could talk about how there's some cute references to Superman the movie, or how it started to set up a Lois Lana thing that brought to mind those silly 50s comics where Lois and Lana fought over Superman's affections, but I won't. To say that I was surprised by this issue is an understatement. What little I knew about it seemed like it was going to be somewhat similar to the Jane Foster Thor thing, but with Lois Lane. That is not the case. That is about as far as I'm willing to go, spoiler-wise. The art in this is not really my cup of tea. The faces look strange, and the panel layout was cluttered. Since this issue is what it is, it's difficult to judge if I'm going to like this or not going forward, so I kinda have to at least pick up the next issue to see if it sells me on the story, because this feels like a bait and switch. The Flash, number 4, written by Joshua Williamson and art by Neil Gogue. The amount of times the word speed is going to be used here in one derivation or another is frankly ridiculous. Barry is still working with Star Labs to help train all the new speedsters to control their powers, whilst worrying that the new supervillain speedster, Godspeed, who has the ability to steal speed force from other speedsters and killing them, might be hiding amongst his students. This issue doesn't really deal with the supervillain Godspeed, but the rogue science group The Black Hole, who were responsible for the thunderstorm that created all the new speedsters. I like this. The new artist draws a lot cleaner than the previous one, and excluding that he draws Barry like he could have been posing for a Nazi propaganda poster, I like it better. Wonder Woman number 4, written by Greg Rucka and art by Nicholas Scott. This issue is the origins part of the two alternating stories. There are no real surprises here for anyone that's familiar with Wonder Woman's origins. Some slight changes from the way it was before the New 52, like the fact that Diana doesn't compete anonymously for the right to bring Steve Trevor back home, the Eagle Crest chestplate, and a new origin for the Invisible Jet. If you've been reading Wonder Woman since the New 52, however, things are bound to be confusing. Rucka's take on the Amazons and the Greek pantheon of gods is decidedly different, and shall we say less dark than Azarello's. Diana is one of the tribe, fully, not someone the rest of the Amazons derisively call clay. This continues to be absolutely beautifully drawn. A clean style, some awesome colors and distinct faces. Wonder Woman might be my favorite book that I'm reading right now. Detective Comics, number 938, written by James Tenian IV and art by Alvaro Martinez. This issue is the daring rescue of Batman from the clutches of the military organization known as Colony. There's a lot of action mixed with talking and finding out what the villain is up to and why, if you can call him a villain. We're not talking a thief or an insane murderer here, but an extremely misguided black ops counter-terrorism organization operating on American soil against American people. Yeah, let's call them villains. Like I've said before, this is more a Batwoman book than anything else. Sure, there's a team there, and Batman is certainly around, but the story centers around Batwoman. Art is pretty good. All-Star Batman Number 1, written by Scott Snyder and art by John Romita Jr. Okay, this one is tricky. It's a really good opening for a story, really tense storytelling with Batman basically on the run from everyone. And I mean everyone. Every single person living in whatever state Gotham City is in. Basically, Batman is transporting Two-Face somewhere to attempt to cure him or some such. It's not really made clear yet, but Two-Face has accumulated blackmail material in every single person in the state, and on top of that, offers a vast fortune to whoever stops Batman from bringing him to their destination. That's the basic synopsis, but that's not really doing it justice. Big things are going on in this book. That being said, does Snyder really have to do these major events all the time? Never a dull moment for his Batman No sir. The art is, look, it's John Romita Jr. There's no one quite like him. Personally, I like his stuff from the 80s and Spider-Man and Daredevil the best, but I grew up with him. But even if you don't like his art, if you like Batman, you have to read this. Action Comics, number 961, written by Dan Jurgens and art by Steven Segovia. This book is officially stalling. 
There's a little more talk this issue, but it's also still mostly the Doomsday fight. We're still only teased with the existence of another Clark Kent and not really getting any clues to who or what he is. The only thing that happens of any significance is that the mysterious Mr. Oz is taking direct action by the end, but nothing of importance is revealed there either. Look, this isn't bad, but it's slow. Painfully slow. The Flintstones, number two, written by Mark Russell and art by Steve Pug. This book continues to be absolutely hilarious. Great satire of modern society, consumerism, entertainment, and religion. Don't expect to come into this just to get a Flintstones book. It's a new take on the Flintstones to reflect the society of today rather than the 60s. It doesn't rely on old sitcom tropes, so the characters are definitely different from the original series. They feel a bit more real, which is weird because the world that they live in and find normal is more absurd than the one in the show. Anyway, great read, pretty pictures, really funny, definitely recommended. Alright ladies and gentlemen, that is what I read this week. Did you like this video? Please like, comment, subscribe and share and all that jazz. Did you not like it, disagree with me? Please let me know in the comments and also like, comment, subscribe and share, whatever. Don't hate me, I'm sick.